maybe slightly disagreement um, given that we currently have in Rome um, a pope who's named after a saint who had a very close relationship with nature and, and animals I think this is also kind of a role model I definitely would say that that human mankind should not be above but should be in partnership with the entire environment with the global context uh, but I subscribe to everything that you've just said especially when it comes to biodiversity we didn't tackle this so far but we've never had in such a short period as in recent years, lost so many species worldwide in, in, in human mankind history. I mean, it's horrible. Yeah? I mean, g given that this has a huge impact on the ecosystem, not only, I mean, we can start with the bees in Germany and, and continue with, with the rainforest in the global south and see what kind of damage was already produced. I think it's kind of a um, cognitive dissonance that we are observing because the perfect storm is already here. The crisis is there and it's not far away from us. Yeah, I come from a region, very western part of Germany, where uh, a tiny little river, the Ahr, last year provoked a horrible flooding scenario. More than 100 people have died in this uh, scenario out of nothing. This, this, this showed up and... To be very honest, I mean, I'm coming from 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 this area, and I was just th there a day before it happened. Um, it's not very much on the agenda currently in Germany, and and maybe I mean, we shouldn't be too broadly discussing things here, but uh, maybe it has to do with the current crisis modus in general that the public mainly focuses on fo one two issues, and that's it. It's 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 limited and it, it, it's boxed and. Um, there are still too many factors that make us ignoring the reality. And I'm, I'm not so sure you've mentioned it, if, if adaptation and mitigation are still the right concepts. I mean, maybe it's already over. I mean, maybe if we've had a, a chance in the last century to work through adaptation and mitigation. But now I think we even have to talk about the term of ambitious climate policy. I mean, what is ambitious if we already know that the 1.5 um, degree target is, is no longer doable? If, if we are end up with 2.7, I mean, the consequences are all on the table, um, but the willingness to, to react um, is, um, is still not present, is not given. Um, another issue, because uh, also this is something where we already see the consequences on a political level, Germany since uh, 2015 has hosted many many refugees first from syria and afghanistan and now from ukraine There's, there was much solidarity also much hate but much more solidarity and much more love um, and now scientists are telling us that by by 2050 three billion people will live in hot spots of climate crisis and they will not stay there they will move and we don't know to which direction they will move. So I think we have reached a point where, where climate change has, has uh, reached a point or a matter of national interest, maybe of national security interest. And uh, wh when I came here, I, I reread um, uh, uh, President von der Leyen's mission statement when she was first was, was uh, elected uh, here in the European Parliament. And I found it quite interesting that, I mean, for her it was a point in the beginning, focusing on the Green Deal, focusing on, on climate protection and, and, and climate crisis. And uh, the, 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 uh, her framing was very much focusing on democracy, on the rule of law, on gender equality. And I thought when I, when I now, after like almost three years, reread this text, I thought, yeah, we have maybe, I mean, it's a very normative objective, but maybe we have also uh, find a situation in which climate protection and, and the climate crisis fight is considered to be as relevant as the promotion of democracy, of the rule of law, of, of values that are currently very much under under attack. I mean, look how, how much populism is rising in, in Europe, in the United States, in other parts. Uh, we, we all crossed our fingers with regard to Brazil very recently. So many countries turn into the wrong direction. Um, and at the same time, these actors also question, I mean, scientific proofs with regard to, to climate change. And this, I think, it's even more be fostered, I think. Um, just to add what you said, I mean, just to clarify, I didn't mean that Catholic Church or Christians are putting a human being into the center of everything. It's more how it is being perceived by secularized society. And when I, uh, as I said, worked for Ecumenical Council of Churches, we opened a dialogue with 
really atheistic uh, part of, for example, Czech society, even with uh, members of Communist Party or other parties, and we discussed actually what 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 are our common values, if there are still any, even if you have like belief, non-belief, and so on. And as said, they were very strongly uh, reacting to to Catholic Church, saying that um, we are too egocentric and that important is like the so-called collaboration with the others. But it was funny to hear it from, uh, <laughs> for example, the Communist Party, where they had in center especially human and industrialization. And uh, as you know about the persecution of, of priests in the times, so I'm just wondering, um, do you think that the Catholic Church and, and the wise and beautiful words of uh, the Pope are... Uh, hurt enough are they because i think i i still lacking talking about innovation transformation you know and scaling up and startups and how we can all problem solve with clean energy i could underline it i'm very much supporting projects and workshops which are uh, which are about clean energy and clean tech because i think it's really needed but on the same time i'm still a bit lacking some you know, discussions about uh, the situation and uh, the human behavior, as you said, and what are our common values, what we should protect, not just the nature, but also some uh, talking about climate justice. You know, my question is, can this be the climate justice, uh, like a field where the Catholic Church could have a bit stronger voice to talk about? Because as we know, the Europe uh, is based on, on a long Christian tradition and values. And I think as... EU is the one kind of uh, still protecting the human rights and is always welcome when there is something wrong uh, seeing it at Russia-Ukraine conflict. I think this is something where the church could really have a voice and clearly uh, articulate the position. So just my question, what do you think about Maybe uh, on, on, on two levels I would like to, to provide an, an answer. First of all, on a, on a value level, I would say yes, equality and justice are in the core um, of our also political thinking. What I'm observing when I, when I bring our understanding um, of these values together with public debates, I would say our contribution could also make to close a certain gap between the understanding of justice, which is, I think, not only a Christian understanding, but also a broad understanding, and the law. I mean, the, I think that we also, given the current debates that we are seeing on, on climate crisis, we clearly see that a new generation has a different understanding of what justice should be. And I think the law should provide the platform that justice will be promoted and protected. So I think this is a contribution that, that the church can make. But you asked me more concretely, and I don't want to hide from this question, if, if, the, if the Pope or if, if churches are heard enough. And I would say from a German, uh, now mainly secular point of view, no. Um, and I bring in the, the, the very German perspective here. 2022 is the first year in German history where the majority of people living in our country do not belong to either of the two big churches, be it, be it Catholic, be it Protestant. And I think what we need is a more humble appearance because, uh, and I've mentioned in the beginning, we do a lot of political advocacy work. So I enter the parliament on a, on a weekly, almost daily basis. I go to ministries, to ministers, state ministers. Yeah. And I see and I experience that I have to explain who we are. We are no longer considered to be a well-known actor, which is a big contradiction given that still 20 million Germans are Catholic. But the idea that, that Catholics also take political positions is no longer that much on the table that uh, politicians uh, welcome me and openly want to discuss with me social, economic or other topics. They are rather surprised that I do not want to discuss with them the sexual abuse scandal that of course needs a lot of attention because it's not over, but this is not a topic here for year, although I could also talk uh, about this for hours. But it shows me that I think also the church needs to adjust its strategy to promote these uh, positions because especially when it comes to sustainability, when it comes also to ethical questions in general, the church 
has um, has a very con very very important contribution to make, and this brings me back to what you said when you introduced yourself. You talked and promoted the idea of of of, uh, of a multilateral, multi. Give me the right term. How did you multi call multi-stakeholder? Multi-stake <laughs> because the stakeholder issue. This is the important one because I think that the church. I mean, if uh, if I am in the humble position to to recommend something to, to to church representatives, the position that the church should take today is also to not only communicate with the church with with the state, but also to other NGOs and to connect better with the civil society. I mean, we are as the central committee a very strong voice of the German Catholic civil society. But I also make what I've just described as an experience when I when I do networking within the secular civil society environment. And I think given that we have this global network, I mean, Catholics always think global. I mean, we are one church globally. Yeah? This is one of the beauty of our religion, of, of, of our confession. And um, and with this regard, I think it's it's very important always to build these bridges in, in different directions and not to take these bridges for granted because they are no longer there. We've missed the chance maybe in the last years to follow the secular trend. Uh, our office of the Central Committee is in Berlin. The vast majority does not and has never belonged to any church. Uh, and at the same time, it's one of the biggest Catholic uh, cities in Germany due to the the huge size of, of, uh, of the city. And this also reminds me on a very daily basis that you have to make clear where you're coming from, why you're doing this, and why you still uh, I mean, deserve to be a good partner for, for relevant future questions. Next question, Mark. Uh, at the heart of the European Green Deal strategy is that no one is being left behind. What do you understand under such slogan? Now, what comes to my mind is uh, Vice President uh, Timmerman, who at one point said, uh, "Well, if the um, if the social or the the ecological transition is not just, then there will be no transition." So I think it's it is very important to take a very a holistic approach to think about the marginalized society, so social groups, not only within Europe but also um, globally. And I mean, coming from Germany, we are very convinced of of subsidiarity. To think about different political layers, where decisions, uh, first of all, need to be taken, but also translated and, and explained. Uh, and this is something where also we as a church, I think, can can do a great contribution. We work as an umbrella organization, so we take a very elite perspective, let's say, because we address uh, Catholic national interests into into the political arena in, in Germany. But through our structure, we have direct access to each and every parish in Germany. Uh, and I think this is this is also the beauty of of the Catholic Church that we as a partner can contribute to better translation and to better maybe also conversation between politics and and individuals on the needs to to embark on such a um, broader transition. And in the end, yes, everybody has to understand that he she is also addressed as an object and an and an subject because this person is in the end also asked to change individually. Um, so I think this is this is one dimension when it comes to the, let's say, the EU family. But when we take the global perspective, I think it's also obvious that um, also here nobody should be left behind because so many have been left behind already. Um, and, um, and I think here again, we have to think about the marginalized groups, the vulnerable ones, those who are already affected. Um, They need, I think, stronger, also, I think, lobby groups being present uh, in these regions in the global north where decisions are taken to make sure that the, the need for action and the urgency for action is much more visible.